So today, rather than a tutorial, I'll be talking a little bit more about how we at Series 4 use Galaxy, and hopefully you get an idea of what can be done with it. Uh, so, more or less, just to rehash what, what I said yesterday about our sequencing facility, um, we have some Illumina high-sec machines and some older 2GA 2X. Um, we can generate, in theory, up to five surveys a month. And we've sequenced a few thousand uh, samples between whole genomes, tumors, and RNA sec and A-frame sec. So if you recall from yesterday, our overall system has six main components to process everything. And today we focus on the workflow manager, which is where we're using Galaxy. So the workflow manager and our setup needs to execute operations on data. And very important for reproducibility, needs to record what is performed and how we generate our result data set. Um, this, for this reason, we use, uh, for this task, we use Galaxy. Um, workflows uh, that we're using usually, I'm talking about like our core workflows where we do our primary processing, so they don't vary very often, but from time to time they do, maybe because the reference was updated. Uh, so for alignments, so for instance, in that case, we need to update our workflows. And what's important is that in our operation, we want to make sure that um, the representation of the operations that was performed uh, annotates or records the fact that one reference was used for an older data set, that a newer reference was used for a newer data set. For those who don't know what Galaxy is, uh, they define it as a web-based platform for data intensive biomedical research. Um, it integrates many popular tools to provide the standard interface uh, through which you can do a number of things. Uh, it's very easily extended in the sense that you can integrate new tools um, and you express workflows graphically in this way here. So uh, what we see here basically is this is an input box, an input data set that comes into the workflow. And then the other boxes are operations and you connect operations by drawing lines between them. So it's pretty intuitive. Um, okay. Once you've defined a workflow, the system takes care of running the tools in the correct order, so it handles the <coughs> dependencies. Um, when two operations don't have inter aren't interdependent, it'll actually launch them both at the same time, so it tries to reduce the uh, uh, the runtime, the overall runtime of the workflow as much as possible. Um, we also use it because it provides a graphical facade uh, in front of the complexities of running these things, in the sense that uh, you can hide the cluster behind it, for instance, because you can configure it so that the operations that it needs to run automatically get submitted to the batch queue system. And uh, you can also use it to hide advanced parameters. So for instance, if you have uh, a workflow that maybe has uh, some, well, let's say advanced parameters, but you want to hand it off to the biology lab where you just want them to hit the button and run it, well, you can do that relatively easy. You make them a custom tool and you just say, okay, when the sample's ready, click this button and it'll fire off a workflow and do something for them. So, um, as I said before, all actions performed are tracked in what Galaxy calls a history. And this history uh, that records all the operations that were performed is saved within Galaxy, but it can also be exported. Um, it can be really important into another Galaxy instance. It can be shared. Um, once you import it in another Galaxy instance, you can actually re-execute it. Uh, and it will even take care of setting up all your dependencies for you, in the sense that in the history, not only will it say the fact that you use a certain command, for instance, PWA, but it will also record the version of the PWA. And when you import the, the history in another um, instance, which doesn't have that specific version, I can go out for you and download it and set it up for you. So. For us, choosing Galaxy over other available systems came down to a few key issues. Uh, the first was the history. Uh, not all workflow tools offer this feature, and for us, uh, aiming to have reproducibility, this was very important. Um, it's fairly feature complete, uh, and rather, it's API. Uh, it offers a web API that, uh, using REST, so it's network accessible. And the API is fairly feature complete in the sense that you can do more or less everything that you can do through the the main graphical user interface, you can do programmatically. Um, it's written in Python. Uh, for this, this was an, an advantage for us since we have a lot of in-house Python experience. And it's popularity. Uh, because, well, we've talked about, we've mentioned the, the, the thing that uh, 
the fact that not all tools have a, a good community behind them. Well, we saw Galaxy growing in popularity, so we figured uh, this would uh, ensure we'd have community support for a long time to come. Um, in addition, some people at Series 4 had already been using it, and they were happy, so that was a good sign. So how are we using Galaxy? Um, we run, uh, we actually run two instances. The first one is for interactive use. So we have a slightly customized instance of, uh, of Galaxy that is publicly accessible. Uh, it's also used internally for anybody who wants to do interactive uh, analysis. Um, and it's also the access point to any of our services externally, uh, to our collaborators, for instance, or even to anybody. You can actually go to this URL here and uh, register for an account, or maybe it actually allows anonymous use to some degree. Okay, so uh, for instance, when we have a collaboration with some outside lab, uh, maybe they ask us if we can implement some specific pipeline for them or some tool, uh, but they don't want to deal with it on the command line, or they don't have the computing resources locally to, uh, to run it. Uh, what we can do for them is set up the tool or set up the workflow for them on our side and allow them to use our computing resources through this interface. So they can start up the tool, upload the data that they need to process, and then just run it. But this is not our pipeline. Uh, our pipeline is the second instance of Galaxy that we're running. So we have um, high-level workflows defined in code, actually within the automator. <coughs> Okay, so the way we do it is uh, the automator system is uh, event-based. Uh, we have a table where we define a number of events that can occur in our process, and for each event there is an associated action. Uh, the action is basically just uh, a function, so to speak, a handler for this event that will get called when this event occurs. So for instance, when the full cell finishes, uh, we notice that the sequencer finished running, uh, we'll call an action that registers the data directory that was generated. Uh, in turn, these actions can generate new events. So for instance, after the data directory is registered, we have a new data directory event. And now we can trigger a workflow. When the workflow finishes, we'll have new data sets. So we'll get new data set events. And now we register the data sets. Okay, so this is how, at the high level, this is how our, our pipeline makes, uh, makes progress. Uh, so actions trigger workflows or perform housekeeping chores, such as registering data sets with IROG, with uh, Omero Biobank, um, or, they act, or they move data to the correct place in our storage system, um, but they do not directly change the data or, mod or, or create new data sets. For that, we use Galaxy, because, again, this allows us to track the operations that we're performing uh, with Galaxy histories. And the histories are then exported to the Omero Biobank component, <laughs> which is the thing I mentioned yesterday with the, with the graphs of operations. Uh, later, if need be, we can reinstantiate those histories in the Galaxy instance and re-execute them. So to use Galaxy as a component in this overall system, we use its API um, because, well, the web interface is not suitable for automation. Um, to, rather than accessing the API directly with, with composing our REST calls, we actually adopted uh, what's called BioBlend is a Python module that gives us uh, a Python interface and to, to call these API calls, basically. Um, uh, later, we contributed to this project, enhancing it, and uh, we created an object-oriented interface that's a little easier to use. Uh, so the BioBlend object interface that we created is fairly feature complete in the sense that it can, you can pretty much access all the Galaxy API calls. Um, it isolates your workflow code from the changes in the Galaxy API that happened through time. Uh, this is actually the original motivation behind the development, because we have code we had code that worked, then we changed Galaxy version, and it didn't work anymore as well, because things changed underneath. So we started writing this, this little layer that would actually convert. Um, we look up the Galaxy version that was being used, and it would convert to a standardized interface. Um, our package also provides higher level functionality, such as querying for entity by name, for instance, or by ID, or running tools, uh, running and waiting for workflow, and programmatically creating or modifying workflows, uh, changing parameter values and such, so you can actually compose your workflow from your program and then ask Galaxy to run it, and then save, of course, what was done. Here's an example of uh, you can call a workflow using BioBlend objects. 
this Python, of course, you would import the Galaxy instance class. Uh, you would connect the Galaxy by specifying the URL and your API key. This is for authentication, so you get a secret code. Um, you would fetch the workflow that you want to run. Uh, this is some trickery to find a library that is called MyLib. And within a library, you have some data sets. So we'll fish out those data sets. And then we'll uh, compose the input. This is more trickery to say that, OK, the workflow has a number of parameters with a name. And to each one of those names, you're going to associate a data set. And then you just pass it to the run method of the workflow. And you tell it, OK, record whatever you do in a history called output history. Okay. Uh, what's nice about this is that the return values, I say here workflow, is actually an object. It's not a simple data structure. So what we've done in this API is, although Galaxy returns simple JSON that has uh, attributes that describe the object that you query, we're actually wrapping it within uh, an object that has behavior. Uh, so a workflow can be run, for instance. And, uh, a library, you can get its data sets. Okay? So when you're writing the code, it makes it a little bit easier to use. And it also enables auto-completion in, uh, in like IPython, for instance, if you're doing interactive things, or, or whatever Python GUI you might want to use, or IDE you like to use. So okay, another problem that we had, and I mentioned yesterday, was scaling computational throughput in our <coughs> uh, So for this, we implemented some Hadoop-based tools, especially for our, our bottleneck steps. Um, and those would be SEAL, uh, PyDuke, and SecPig are other support platforms that support APIs that we use on top of Hadoop to help us write, uh, write tools. Okay, so these tools generate new data sets. So in our setup, we want to call them through Galaxy. So we can have a history that says what we did. Okay, but Galaxy is incompatible with Hadoop-based tools. Uh, there are two issues that uh, uh, prevent them from, from playing nice with each other. Uh, the first is the number of files in a data set. Galaxy assumes that a data set is a file, pretty much. Okay? And on the other hand, Hadoop purposely, purposefully splits up data sets into multiple files, because being a distributed system, it's going to split up your job into many tasks, each one running in a different node, and every one is going to generate its own output file. And the other problem is uh, data sets in a mounted path. Galaxy expects that whatever data sets you're working on are directly accessible on a machine where Galaxy is running. Uh, Hadoop, on the other hand, favors using its distributed file system, which cannot be used like a normal file system. So whatever we generate with Hadoop then cannot be accessed directly from Galaxy. And the same problem exists if you're running on the cloud. Say you want to rent uh, storage space on Amazon and use their nice uh, uh, Elastic MacReduce service to run Hadoop on their cloud. Well, with Galaxy, you have a problem now because you can't access your data on the S3 buckets directly. So to solve this, we created an adapter we called Hadoop Galaxy. Uh, conceptually, the solution is pretty simple. Uh, we create a level of indirection. Uh, we create this thing called a path set, which is, is a text file simply, is a new Galaxy data set. Um, and within this text file, we list a number of URIs each one of which is referencing some part of your entire data set. Um, to materialize a full data set, you would take all these part files that you're referencing in your, in, your, in your path set, and you just concatenate them all together. So here's an example that should make things clear. Uh, we have a little bit of uh, metadata here. This is just a header, so we specify the version of the format and the data type that we're uh, referencing. And these are two files. These are two lines of our path set. Uh, each line is referencing a different file, which is sitting on a Hadoop file system, so not on our local machine. Um, if we wanted to recompose this entire data set, we would take this file and this, and this second R2 file and just stick them together in the same file, and now we're done. The, adapt the, the path set alone, though, isn't a complete solution. Um, the, we need another component, an adapter, which will sort of dereference these path set files and provide these paths as arguments to our Hadoop program. So this is another example, or an, an example of our adapter in, uh, in use. Uh, Galaxy would call, rather than calling, OK, here we want to call this program here, distributed text zipper. So it's going to compress some data for us. Um, rather than calling 
this Hadoop-based program directly, we're going to call our adapter, which is called Hadoop Galaxy, and we're going to tell it that we want to use this Galaxy data set, data set 1, 2, 3, 4, as input, and we want it to put its output in data set 1, 2, 3, 5, okay? Now, in turn, this adapter is going to perform this. It's going to call our Hadoop program. The contents of 1, 2, 3, 4, which is what you saw earlier in the example path set, are going to be provided as input, and that's these two paths here. And then it's going to generate a new path where the Hadoop program can write the output. Now, the exact configuration here will specify the configuration of the adapter will tell it, okay, use this Hadoop file system, and within there, write it in this particular directory. And here, it's just going to generate a random name for you, something unique where it can write. Um, okay, when the program is finished, the adapter will write this path into our path set here. So now Galaxy will have a new file in hand that references our new output paths, output data set on uh, Hadoop. Um, in addition, the package includes some utilities that uh, help us uh, basically integrate both conventional programs and Hadoop-based programs within the same Galaxy uh, uh, workflow. Uh, Make Path Set will be the first one. Uh, this will take any conventional Galaxy data set and create a path set that references it. So with this program, you can put it in between a Hadoop program and a conventional program, and it will form a link between them. Uh, the inverse operation is cat path, which, as the name suggests, will take all the files references referenced by a path set and stick them all together and create a new Galaxy data set. So this goes from Galaxy, sort of from conventional to Hadoop, and this would go from Hadoop to conventional. A nice feature of this program is that it can actually use your Hadoop cluster to parallelize the concatenation operations. It'll run a whole bunch of writes together from different machines, and you'll, you'll finish faster this way. Uh, put data set is another utility that is required in the case where your Hadoop cluster and your Galaxy machines are separate. So you don't have direct access from your Hadoop cluster to your Galaxy space. In this case, you need to copy your data over, and you can put this step explicitly in your workflow. So put data set will take your Galaxy data set and push it over to the other side. Uh, split path set is uh, a little tool that will help you, will, will let you split the paths that you're referencing based on regular expression. And distributed text support, this is a bit of an example that we implemented. Uh, it'll compress text files using your Hadoop cluster. So you can uh, run uh, distributed compression jobs and, and uh, uh, well, not to see how Hadoop program works with Galaxy. So this is a sample workflow that uses these tools. Uh, we have an input data set here, which would be a path set in this case. This is actually, um, this is actually a sample workflow that we use when we don't need to do any processing on the reads, when we only need to package them maybe to shift them out to somebody uh, who has requested sequencing. So out of the multiplexer, we'll, which runs on Hadoop, we'll get a path set file, which references the files uh, where our reads are. Uh, cat paths here, this is the utility I just mentioned earlier, will take all those Hadoop output files and stick them all in the same file, which we can pass the pass QC, which is a conventional tool. Uh, on this side, instead, we'll separate, we'll use a split path set to split read one and read two, which are sitting in the same data set, um, zip them up, and then cap them into a single file. Okay, so it's generating read one and read two, and then those we can ship out to, to our client. Uh, okay. So to wrap things up, um, Galaxy for us has provided a good compromise between the functionality required for effective automation and the GUI and conceptual simplicity that we can use to expose these services to non-technical users. Um, through its API, we can control this functionality uh, programmatically, and we've implemented this file and objects uh, wrapper to provide a, a Python interface for us. And the light integration with uh, Hadoop, well, it has virtually no overhead. It works in practice. We use it in our pipeline, and, uh, and that's it. Thank you. Um, if you're interested, the Hadoop Galaxy component and the BioBlend component that I mentioned, they're open source, you can find them on GitHub.
uh, done some comparison when when the galaxy run behind the in front of the slurm and the, when the galaxy run in front of the group. Did you do some comparison? What is the comparison between these two? Comparison, okay, we don't use slurm, we use grid engine. Uh, yeah, yeah, suspect example, you're thinking if we gain any performance by using Hadoop tools rather than conventional yeah, yeah. tools. Um, yes, but that depends on the tool specifically. So um, our demultiplexer, for instance, scales almost linearly, at least at the cluster sizes that, uh, that we're using. So uh, if you were to use a standard demulti demultiplexer on one node, uh, uh, compared to our Hadoop-based demultiplexer on uh, 50 nodes, you could expect to go close to 50 times faster as total runtime. But yesterday, uh, I mean, yesterday somebody mentioned that they were following the SDFS uh, when, when you have to write a lot of data, small files. We don't use small files, not on SDFS. We use big data files. So like small files, we only have small files uh, with the, the sequencer output, the BCL files that the, the Illumina sequencer generate. Uh, but those we leave on our shared storage device. Okay. Once we're working with reads, we're working with big files. Yeah, last question. Yeah. Uh, this Galaxy adapter, uh, uh, actually I don't get what, why didn't you just uh, uh, make a Galaxy job runner for Hadoop? This would be much easier because you can define how to submit and how to collect results and then it will be handled by Galaxy. Because the problem is not just running the command, it's actually having access to the files. And if the files are on HDFS, for instance, then your runner can't help you access the data set. Unless but you if you have the files as history elements, and you define a job runner, then it will be automatically done, but you just need to define its but very small number. But a normal, but a file in HDFS can't really exist as a data set in history, because Galaxy has no way to see it. Galaxy doesn't understand how to access HDFS. So that was okay. a problem. So we needed to create a fake file yeah. to make it think that it has something in hand, but really it's just a placeholder that tells you where to find the real data. Yeah. But that's just one information I'd like to add in, in the, I think, not the new version, but the current version of Galaxy, 